Hedge fund and private equity managers have always been subject to the whims of their investors or the rules of their funds. After all, the money belongs to their clients. But, for the managers, few things are more galling than having to pass on a sure thing because they have to give the money back. Now many of the world's savviest hedge fund and private equity managers think they have found a way round the problem. Instead of traditional funds that allow investors regular opportunities to redeem their money, or buyout funds that wind up after 10 years, they are looking to raise money for vehicles that bring cash in that can be invested in perpetuity. In the industry parlance, this is known as permanent capital and is seen as a new holy grail. Whether these are Stock market listed funds or acquisition vehicles that raise money in public share offerings, or reinsurance companies that bring in premiums to invest, they have a few things in common fat fees, and an end to the need to plead with potential investors to write checks every few years. The inspiration for many alternative managers is Berkshire Hathaway, the listed investment vehicle of Warren Buffett, who for 50 years has been able to invest the profits from his businesses and the premiums from his insurance operations without investors pressuring him to return cash to them. The result is that Berkshire is the fourth largest company on the U.S. stock market. Everyone is suffering from Warren Buffett envy, says the head of a private equity firm in New York. Berkshire had the money for rescue loans to Goldman Sachs in 2008 and Bank of America in 2011, moments of great fear in the markets when everyone except the U.S. government seemed to be fleeing. Berkshire has made profits of more than $12 billion to date, in 2015, on those deals. As well as Mr. Buffett's, the business model used for comparison is that of Carl Icahn, the controversial corporate raider. Mr. Icon runs a family-only hedge fund but also has an $11.4 billion listed vehicle called Icon Enterprises, whose businesses span, at different times and among other investments, railcars, metal recycling and textiles. If you look at what Carl Icon has done in the permanent capital vehicle, it has been really productive. It's actually the result of years of careful planning. Icon had spent the 2000s making hundreds of millions of dollars the new-fashioned way, creating a hedge fund structure so that he could invest his own money alongside people willing to give him 2.5% of their investment, plus 25% of their profits, for the privilege. By 2007 he was managing as much as $5 billion in outside capital from endowments, pension funds and even a Middle Eastern country. It worked wonderfully until his funds lost more than 35% of their value during the economic meltdown. Suddenly, like most fund managers, he faced disappointed investors and let cash-strapped partners redeem their funds instead of scratching back his assets. Under management, Icon cut himself loose from the burden of limited partners entirely. He returned the remaining $1.76 billion of outside capital in his hedge fund in 2011. I never had a problem with my investors, says Icon. But in the end there were too many conflicts when you wanted to buy 100% of a company. Rather than be a fee-earning fund manager, he would reboot as a lone wolf, armed with a jumble of personal investment pools commingled with the funds of his publicly traded vehicle, Icon Enterprises, ticker symbol, IEP, of which he owns over 90%. What separates him from others is that they run money that can be recalled by their investors. Icon, by virtue of his post-meltdown revamp, wages proxy battles and issues tender offers with this so-called permanent capital, money under his complete control. And given how large that permanent war chest is, he can target companies previously thought unassailable. Right now, says Icon, without selling anything, we can write a check for about $10 billion. 
with that kind of ammo icon, can take on a cash-rich company with a market cap of as much as $50 billion. I'm sure most would consider Warren Buffett to be the best investor ever. But the numbers tell a different story. In fact, the greatest investor of all time is billionaire activist investor Carl Icahn. Incredibly, both Icahn and Buffett have been building their respective investment empires for close to five decades. And more incredibly, they remain at the top of their profession. Icahn has, unequivocally, shown superior skill as an investor. Consider this. Icon has returned 30% annualized since 1968. That would turn every $1,000 invested with Icon into $383 million today, an incredible number. Buffett, on the other hand, returned 19.5% annualized during virtually the same time period. Buffett's growth rate over that length of time is indeed amazing too. But due to the power of compounding, the wealth creation of Buffett, from pure investment returns, pales in comparison to that of Icon. Icon's investment skill has created $62 to every $1 created by Buffett. So how has Icon been able to outperform Warren Buffett and the broad stock market by so much and for so long? Of course, Icon is a dogged shareholder activist and often an agitator of corporate management. Key to his playbook is using power and influence to control his own destiny on stocks. He invests in